Thank you. Okay, um, well, thank you. Welcome to, thank you and welcome to uh, the Rare Business uh, podcast. Um, to, with me today is Duncan Cheetle of a number of different uh, businesses, but uh, most famously of the, the Supper Club. But um, before we get onto that, uh, welcome, Duncan. And, thank you. Uh, before we get started, tell us a little bit about you and about sort of your work, well, your background and then also your work, what you're doing right now. Uh, well, I've had a fairly, uh, very checkered uh, sort of history, I suppose. Um, I've uh, I started life as a, as, a, as an accountant, um, and then I moved into corporate finance, and then I was finance director for a venture capital backed publishing group uh, before setting up a business um, called Prelude uh, about 11 years ago. Um, uh, we've done uh, our ambition, or the the, the, the Prelude and the various projects that we do, including the Supper Club, are all geared around a mission which is to make Britain the most enterprising nation in the world. So everything we do is focused around that sort of objective. Fantastic. And um, so tell us about the the Supper Club. I mean, who's that aimed at? The Supper Club is uh, for founders and CEOs um, of fast-growing, innovative businesses uh, across Britain. So... Uh, typically beyond uh, beyond startups, so we we say there's a, a, a minimum threshold of a million turnover, um, and the idea and the idea is we pull together, um, you know, the, we we look to bring on board the best of breed, so award-winning, faster-growing businesses, so that they can all learn from each other, and we connect them and uh, and try and ensure that uh, they they get as much value as possible from from learning from each other and from the connections that they can make between themselves and, and that we can help facilitate. Excellent. And and uh, how long has that been going for now? Uh, coming up to eight years. Eight years and something like 750 events to date. Fantastic. And uh, how many, is that just a UK based? Yes, we're very much uh, UK um, UK based at the moment. Um, as I say, it's, it's very much, our, our thing is about focusing on Developing enterprise in in in, in Britain. Uh, that said, we are looking at doing possible supper club uh, groups outside of the UK as a, as a way of sort of facilitating uh, connections for those that are exporting and, and selling overseas. Excellent. Um, and how big is the network so far? Well, we're a quality over quantity affair, so we're. Okay. I think at the latest count, we're about 225 members. Wow, that's quite a powerful group. Uh, they're, well, they're a, they're, a, they're a great assortment of um, some of the good and the great of, uh, of, of the entrepreneurial community. Fantastic. So, so um, yeah, I mean, members vary from from those sort of at the earlier, earliest, you know, earlier stages, but beyond startup, as I say, up to up to the Ed Rays and Charles Dunstans of the world, and Luke well, Johnson. And excellent. I mean, they're yeah, big names in the enterprise community in uh, in the UK. That's right. Um, but I noticed I was doing a little bit of research before the interview, and I noticed there's a couple of other projects that you've got onto. I mean, one is a really big one called Startup Britain, which I'll I want to get to in the uh, in, a, in a moment. But I also noticed there's an, another one that you're associated with, and that's the Thanks to project. Uh, yes, thank, Thanks to is probably the um, the anomaly to the to the mission statement. So it, it's it's slightly different. It's a social enterprise aimed at encouraging people to thank those. Uh, that have made a difference in their life. So it's about building recognition for the unsung heroes in our local communities. So whether that's a teacher that really inspires you, uh, and, and the key difference is it's not sort of thanking them for the A-level results you might have got. It's it's for the fact that they've inspired you to go out and do something, and you you never you never went back and said thank you. So um, thanks to is very much about encouraging that. What we have done is develop a an enterprise training program off the back of it, something we call the Social Enterprise Challenge. So it's aimed at young people, they work as a group running a campaign, community based program over over six weeks and the idea is to get as many people engaged in that campaign as possible. Wow. Um, and that's yeah, that's something Coots has supported us the last couple of years. So we, we went nationwide this year and we've had about um, that sounds like a, it's a fantastic project. I mean it's one it is one of those things around sort of um you know, that idea around sort of, I think it was have you heard of a guy called uh, Gary um, Vaynerchuk. Mm, that sounds like a name I would remember. Um, <laughs> he's, a, he's quite a big um, sort of blogger, and he's also an author and uh, a bit of a wine um, 
connoisseur as well. I uh, started his own wine TV channel. Okay. Um, in the states, and but just recently wrote a book. I think it's called The Thank You Economy. Uh, it does ring a bell. So I think somebody else has mentioned that, but um, no, I don't. I don't know. And I think um, it's, it's interesting where you've got the you, you set up this 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 website. Thanks to and there's this there's almost a. a I don't know. Do, do you feel like there's a wave of, um, or an opportunity, let's say, uh, and, and also a wave where people are building sort of gratitude, as it were, and it's a, and it's a good way to build better relationships with both your your people, your stakeholders, your customers, those sort of things. Uh, yes, I guess it wasn't. It was less around from a from a sort of. A, a commercial rationale, but I do think actually, you know, with the credit crunch and the and the focus on, you know, what what the, the, the sort of the greed factor that drove um, and the incentive plans that drove drove the sort of Western economies to the brink, I, I think there's probably a lot of people out there recalibrating and sort of thinking, you know, what, who are the people add the most within our communities, and they're they're clearly a lot of those people that work very hard for not a lot in many cases of of, of pay. Um, and we kind of all know in our heart of hearts that they don't get the recognition they deserve. Yes. And these people are clearly not money driven as a as a, a key driver. Uh huh. So thanks to is really our answer, at least one way to to sort of encourage people to make take the time and effort to publicly thank you know people that they feel have touched, whether it's a you know midwife that's helped helped them the delivery of their first child or second child or whatever, or or that inspiring teacher or. Or, or anybody else, um, or in, indeed, if it's not a person, it could be you know the, most of the campaigns that are run on it are focused on you know, a charity or a, a hospital or, or or some group of people that they feel are delivering on a on a you know on a daily and a weekly basis. Going and sort of acknowledging the sort of when people go above and or not necessarily above yeah, and be, above uh, and beyond, but exactly, just like that made exactly. a difference. Yeah, exactly, and it's just you know the power of a thank you. I mean, it's a bit like you know we we'll walk down the street and you smile at people. You 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 know you find they smile back. It's not it's not a very complicated thought. Yeah. Um, I think our ideals are that as we get critical mass, we'll be able to start identifying who the people are within communities that are making the, you know, the really big difference. Sure. Uh, uh, you know, we've done a lot of research, asked hundreds and hundreds of people, and you know most people recognise that. There are some reasonable teachers out there, but there are very few that are hugely inspiring. You know, they're really, they're really top notch, and they're not easily identifiable. Yes, um, and that's probably true of lots of other professions. The really outstanding ones don't get the recognition they deserve. Um, sure. sure. And if we want to encourage other people to follow in their footsteps, we 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 need to sort of shout their praises. Well, indeed, oh, that's great. But then, um, more recently, it seems that you've. Um or at least more recently in the public eye, you've you've got involved in a uh, new project called uh, Startup Britain, or Startup That's U- right. Startup is it Startup Britain or Startup UK? Startup Britain. Startup Britain. Um, and there's some um, there's some big supporters and partners and uh, sponsors of this um, that you know this this new project. Can you tell us a little bit about that, where it started from, and what its aims are? Yes, uh, a group of us got together some time ago. Um, and we had we, we had some ideas about what we thought could be done to encourage enterprise, whether that's encouraging people to think and look at setting up a business as a an alternative to a sort of corporate career, uh, through to ways to promote um, growth in in early stage businesses. And um, we met originally with Lord Young um, to bounce some ideas. Uh, off the back of that, he introduced us to Steve Hilton, who um, uh, you may know as um, sort of strategy advisor to David Cameron. Uh, off the back of uh, a meeting with him, he got very excited uh, at, about the ideas. One of the ideas that we had in particular, which was a um, a, 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 a UK-based response to America's startup, startup America. Right. So we we unashamedly sort of looked at what they did and went. Well, that, that's quite interesting. That's a great way of pulling together and making a campaign-based approach to encouraging enterprise. Let's um, let's emulate what they've done, but do it better. So, we 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 certainly got um, Steve Hilton's in, in, um, support initially, and then through that, uh, David Cameron and the rest of the cabinets. So, um, whilst we are not government-funded, uh, we we do have the support of uh, of Downing Street and and the, and the cabinet. 
um, and, that, and that's why they sort of came out and forced to support it uh, at launch. Excellent. Um, and the idea is to celebrate, inspire and accelerate. Those are the kind of three words we use to describe what Startup Britain's about. So we're about not reinventing the wheel. So um, we had some criticism for not having loads of content on the site. Well, that was a, that was a, a very clear objective of ours is not, not to put lots of content on the site, but to link to content that's well provided for elsewhere. So it's almost like becoming a meta site in a way. Yeah, so it's kind of li li links to content, um, you know, and originally that was curated by us. Yeah. Uh, and again, you know, we got some flack for that as well as, uh, as well as sort of positive feedback. But the version two will move to um, a far more uh, user generated. So we will encourage people to put up their favorite links to content or mm -hmm. online tools. And they'll be user rated, so the best will stay at the top, and those that other people don't rate will disappear into obscurity. There you go. Um, but there's lots of other things planned. So, you know, l launch was what we could get delivered in a fairly short period of time um, that we thought had some value, and that all included the commitments and offers from a range of corporates and, and SMEs. Uh -huh. And we're looking at the moment where we're in discussions to, to, to extend those and, and, and get even better commitments. Uh, and then we're looking at other things like extending uh, um, support for other other programs that are out there. So if people are running events, we're going to be able to showcase those hopefully in an efficient way. So there's, there's lots of stuff in the pipeline. Excellent. And um, if people if people see that and read it and things and and think, well, I, you know, can they get involved? Can they you know lend a hand or you know what's or other than just sort of consuming the content and the links and things? Is there is there ways that they can they can get involved and spread the word, as it were, or or even yeah, help yeah. develop the content? Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, if they are, um, I mean, they can drop any one of us to, a, a line if there's something they have in mind. Um, as I say, from uh, fr from once once we have version two up and running, people will be able to look at it and say, well, I'm running an event or something I think is relevant, and load that up. Um, the, the details of which will, will be made more clear. I'm, I'm not sort of heavily involved in the tech development side of things, so probably not the best person to answer questions on that. Mm -hmm. But but if people are doing something um, and they want to highlight it, we'll we'll do what we can to support it. The problem is, of course, we're getting approached by lots of people saying, "Oh, I run something," or "I've got a product that's great for growth businesses." And what we have to be careful is we you know we we can't come back and start promoting everybody's product or service or offering. Mm -hmm. What we can do is say, look, if you're doing something that's exciting uh, and truly about supporting growth businesses, then we'll do what we can to put the sort of shine a spotlight on it. So, um, and with version two, there'll be opportunities if people have got, um, I don't know, the biggest way is if somebody wants to sponsor or support existing programs out there, we're going to provide a, a marketplace to match pledges. So right. particularly if bigger companies or those with budget want to support a, uh, they can say, well, we'd be really interested in supporting programs that help, I don't know, social enterprises or uh, early stage businesses. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we, we will we will try and match them to existing programs. So, if people have got a program um, that they're looking for support, they can they can add that, and other people can add their sort of, you know, commitment or thoughts as to what what support they might be provided, whether that's cash or in kind. And is this and is all the, is all of this is this going to be? Um... Is it all sort of free, or is it paid for? Is it a mixture of the boat, or the two? Um, I, I'm, you know, the the, the site um, is, the, 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 you know, it's not it's not a paid for site. So mm -hmm. we we're we're at the moment um, we're talking to people, some of the particularly the, some of the bigger players about uh, sponsorship. So we have some commitments. I'm not sure if we're, I don't think we're in a position to say quite who they are at the moment publicly, sure. but. Um, uh, but we've had a fantastic response from uh, a number of, of, of larger corporates who've come forward and said they want to support us with in-kind and with cash support. Um, we're running it as a not-for-profit. We're not government-sponsored or supported financially in any way, so we're independent of government, supported mm -hmm. by them, but not but not um, not run by them or influenced by them too heavily. Um, and the idea is, yes, it's not-for-profit. Um, we're not looking to... Uh, it, it, we're not certainly looking to charge or anything of the content on the site. Um, I I don't know if uh, programs that we'll run will ever be on a pay for basis. I guess we wouldn't close the door on that if, if we felt that was right. But I know lots of the programs that have been inspired already by Startup Britain. So um, 
without with my other hat on and the supper club we've we've um we asked our members if they wanted to pledge a thousand hours in in the event we had fifteen hundred hours wow. of men- mentoring time so that's certainly something we're we're delivering for free as a part of our kind of you know inspired by startup britain something we're just giving back and our members are willing to give up their time so we're matching those that apply through the site the, for, for mentoring support to to mentors well that's fantastic and um and hopefully hopefully we'll inspire others to sort of step forward and say well here's something we're happy to deliver you know in an, it, it, because they want to and not necessarily looking to, to to make money from it well indeed um so but g- so given your experience i mean one with this project and and two with this, the supper club and how in network with all these high growth companies and entrepreneurs i mean what i think we must admit that things are still I think there's an expression that says we're not out of the woods yet when it comes out of the uh, we think about coming out of sort of recession. I think we're, we're technically out of recession right now, but we're, I don't think we are out of the woods yet. No. Um, that's, yeah, that's true. Hey, would you, um, based on your experience and the people that you know and, and the, the people that you deal with, particularly at the Supper Club and, and also on Startup uh, Britain, what are the what would you say would be the the top three things if you're a sort of smaller business, whether you're just started up or you're growing? What would be the things that you would say to them that focus on these things? Because these are the the big areas or the lessons that 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 I've seen that people learn um, from our networks. Um, gosh, I think it depends on where you're at in your business, but I mean uh, the age thing. I, and the first thing I'd say is I think it's a fantastic time to it's a fantastic time to start to scale a business. Um, the worst time is to scale a business in the good times because you are probably in a false sense of um, security, mm-hmm. and that you can let you can you can let costs kind of escalate because you maybe don't have so too much pressure on price. You've got you know you're taking orders rather than having to go out and sell in a t- you know in a in a so a tough market like now is a great time to launch and a great time to grow because you are going to be under real scrutiny and pressure with your cost base, so margins will be tighter than it would be otherwise. So if you've got a product or service and people are buying it, don't be put off by the macro picture where we've got almost no growth in the economy or very low growth. Sure. It's irrelevant. You know, if you're a small business, it's all about, have I got something people want? And then making sure that the cash in exceeds the cash out. It's fairly basic stuff. So, yeah. you know, credit terms are being squeezed. So there's no point growing really fast if you can't fund that. If you're having to pay suppliers quicker than your customers are paying you, you've got to make sure you can fund that difference. Sure. Um, you know, so make sure you've, got, you've, you've talked to the bank or to whoever else about credit. Um, it's very easy to get stumbled to bad debts. You know, you think all your customers, they'll pay, but just, just don't, you know, be, be brutal about getting your money in. Mm-hmm. Um, don't, don't let debtors slip. Uh, yeah, I, yeah so that expression cash is king you know it's it's very easy to get carried away with growing the top line and not be absolutely focused on getting cash in and making sure your cost base is as, as tight as it possibly can be so um, I'd say it's a great time to grow but obviously the, the you know the cautionary the cautionary note is 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 just do everything to make sure you don't sort of end up with a bad debt I mean that that can wipe out you know one one big customer sort of going under and a big you know big debt and you're you know that can can really scupper an early stage business so look at the risks that you're facing and really make sure that you've got those covered off but but as I say I think I think now's a fantastic time to be growing if you've got something people want if you're a small business you're fleet of foot you're in a much stronger position to to react quickly and be adaptable hmm. but just make sure you're growing a profitable business and you don't take on turnover that's not profitable or has cash flow timing differences that are going to put your put your business in a in a tight spot Yes, and it seems to me that uh, also that um, I mean that's one of the things that I write about on the um, on the blog is is about creating more sort of customer centric organisations. Is that something that you're seeing as a um, a rising a rising trend? We've seen lots of research where people have said um, lots of CEOs and different companies have said actually building better relationships with our customers is going to be the key to our future future growth. I mean, is that because it's just getting harder to to market ourselves. I know it's because it's getting easier. Okay. So can you, can you explain um, what, what you mean well, by the, that? The, 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 the obvious thing is, you know, the internet's changed everything, and yes. we've gone. You know, <clears throat> don't want to fall into the kind of uh, 
yeah, the, the, following the Cash's King quote and sort of a, it's just rattle off a load of hackneyed kind of uh, observations. But there are, um, you know, what, what's definitely changed is it's very difficult to say here's a product, the old school kind of, you know, I produce something and now I'm just going to kind of broadcast sell it. People are used to being able to find exactly what they want in the way they want it. And um, if, if you look at e-tailing, for example, there are lots of niche players out there able to find an audience in, because of the internet in the way that they couldn't have done 20 years ago. So I think that's opening up and made it possible for lots of people to provide very unique offers, offerings to quite niche and narrow customer bases. So, um, and, and it's cheap as chips now to set up a business. I um, mean, you know, a, 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 it's to set up a business, you can work from home, you can you can outsource fulfillment to a large degree if you are, so you say, a retail business and sell online. You don't need to take on necessarily an expensive lease. Um, it, 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 it's easy to get going, um, yeah. and, and I think it it puts pressure on everybody so uh, to to be more customer centric. So I, I I think the pressure there is because it's got easier to get going, and people, if you if you don't deliver what the customer wants and are really focused on them, somebody else will, and it's very easy to find them now. So the flip side is obviously it's much easier to find what you want. Yeah, and um, what I was thinking, uh, what I was thinking was that, um, and you've got TripAdvisor, and you've got you know there's so many. If you look about holidays, you've got TripAdvisor. There's so many places to go to get peer group reviews and under and you know the old yellow pages, and you'd go and look for a plumber. Now it's it, whatever service you're looking for, it's just easy to find choice. Yes. Easy to scrutinise and see what other people have reviewed and said about that that company business. Um, so it, it, I, I think it's a natural thing. I mean, I think the good news is it's much easier to get going um, if you're thinking about setting up a business. And the, and the, and the, and the good news for the customer is it's putting pressure on businesses to really deliver because those that don't change their ways or improve or keep up with the times they will will be out of business. But they probably deserve to be so. And one of the things that seems to me that when you when you move from being a, a smaller business to a growing a growing business and retaining that if you like um, that customer touch or that customer centricity, it can be a, a lot of the time can come down to how engaged your your employees are. Um, and is that is that a, have you seen that as a key concern around um, as people grow their businesses? Yeah, they've got to grow them grow themselves as well. Well, I mean, it's, it's absolutely critical. Um, there's, there's various ways of looking at it. I mean, if you if you're going to um, if you're going to manage a business and scale, uh, unless you're a pure tech play, it's it's all about the team that you you build. Um, and even with a tech play, it's obviously about the software and the development of the team. But building the right culture, building the right sort of environment in which people are kind of productive, work hard, go the extra mile, means that you're you're just going to have the edge on another business that perhaps has employed um, the wrong people in the first place because they've attracted and done a poor poor job of hiring in the first place. You know, if you've got bigger staff turnover, obviously that's going to hit your productivity and and um, and, and creativity. Um, so so it couldn't be more critical. I mean, you take the worst cases of businesses that get it wrong in all ways. Um, their 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 entire cost base and productivity are, are hit the wrong way. If you get the right, if you if you're good at hiring, good at retaining and motivating, then um, it, it's, it's going to make a world of difference. Hmm. So it's like it seems like because um, that's what it seems to me that's one of the one of the the um, or let me, it's my impression that when as companies grow and particularly when you know when they're being run by you know um, entrepreneurs and things and they can. They themselves sometimes become become can become the real motivation, the driving force um, behind their businesses. But they can they can run they run so fast that they almost forget to uh, to bring the people sort of their people with them, as it were. And it seems to me one of the keys that when you're growing a business is always to remember that actually it's not just about you; it's actually about the the team that you're building. And is is that a thing that that you? Because I've seen lots of research which says actually. One of the things that the bottlenecks for a lot of growth businesses is the the lack of uh, or a um, a need for developing sort of management leadership um, 
and communication sort of skills amongst sort of entrepreneurs and senior management teams. Is that something that you that you've seen was a key as a key area of, for development? I think it's probably something slightly different. I would say, um, in what I see, is that uh, most entrepreneurs that build a team are kind of you know a, a, a character you know a, a, a character of four. So you know if they've been able to go out and, and and inspire people to join them when they're still a very small business and or sell their products, which you know when it starts out doesn't have an ex- a sort of recognised brand, and they they've clearly got something about them. The the difficulty is um, not or is is not really that they're sort of Entrepreneur led, or the, or the or the culture is largely built around the personality in the early stages. I don't think there's necessarily a problem with that. It's the fact that lots of entrepreneurs in the early stages fail to um, hire and delegate properly. Right. So uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure I've fallen into that trap, and I know lots of others do as well. That they find it difficult, certainly to begin with, and some never get over it. That they don't, they don't. Uh, they don't delegate effectively and bring on people that can take over stuff. I always say if you're looking to really grow a business, you should make sure as, as the, the, the founder or try and aim to always be redundant. Right. Because you, there will always be more stuff that you can do, whether that's looking at where you go strategically, looking at going out and developing longer term strategic partners and looking at where you're going. The, the more that you're not tied into the day-to-day um grind of stuff the, the the more freed up you are and hmm. um to, to look at where the business is 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 heading um and 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 so you know as an ideal you should be looking to make yourself redundant mm-hmm. that's what i'd always say if you're a growth business clearly not 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 so if you're a lifestyle business but if you're looking to scale then the objective would always be to ensure there's enough margin in the business to bring in manage people that can manage i mean there's no point in trying to ask people to do stuff who are you know, don't have enough experience, you're going to be on a hiding to nothing. Sure. Um, so you need to make sure if you're going to grow that there's enough margin in your business to bring in managers and people that can effectively, that you can delegate to them. There's no point delegating to people that can't deliver. Um, yeah, it's not it's almost like hire people that are better than better than yourself. That all well, sort I think, of makes you know, sense. And I mean, that's certainly something that people can fall into the trap of, you know, hiring in their own image, but, you know, not as good and then wondering. No, I mean, definitely, if you can, if you can hire a bit better people better than you particularly in skills or if you you know if you know you're very good at one thing that's why you know two founders in a business often work well together if they have very very different roles if one's more sales marketing and outward facing one's very good at operations and delivery that can work very well sure that Um, makes yeah it makes a lot of sense um duncan i'm just conscious of time i just wanted to um uh just finish on a couple of things i know that there's a um i know that Startup Britain is a um, is is almost curating a lot of stuff that's out there, um, you know, and there is a lot of information, a lot of good sources sort of out there. What um, what things do you read uh, to, or what things do you do to sort of keep, if you like, in touch or keep um, on top of things? The th- um, resources that you like. Well, I I, I have the very fortunate advantage of running a club full of. Some of the most successful entrepreneurs in the country. So I'll be honest, that that's that's my, I um, you know, I write, I, I might read the the you know the FT on Saturday. I might read the Sunday Times. I'll 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 look at some blogs. But I probably don't. I mean, I spend an awful lot of my time in forums and dinners and and discussions with some of the most successful entrepreneurs in the country. So, um, you know, the the lesson out of that I would say is if you're if you're somebody looking to grow your business, get involved with the right kind of quality group so that you can learn from peers okay um i I do that all the time and by country mile that's the most useful way for me to uh because it's an iterative process yes you you know you can you can ask a question get a response and 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 develop and evolve it um the the power of being around a a group of people that you you find inspiring and you respect and you're able to contribute back to is is absolutely you know fantastic so spend less time reading about it and actually go out and actually build relationships well, I, I, there's a time and place i mean i think there's lots of you know there's good material out there uh, and I, I you know that there's so many places to go and, and lots of useful things but what you'll often find is if you're in a peer group of people somebody there will go oh and i saw this amazing article mm. and so they act as your filter because there's yes. so, much, so much stuff out there 
And as you said before, Startup Britain is trying to sort of say, well, if we can get the input from lots of people to sort of deep links into particular articles rather than just to some, somebody's homepage, which doesn't really help us very much. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I would add to that and say that if you're looking and if you're serious about growing a business, find a peer group. Now, whether that's you just go out there and do it informally yourself or join a group online, but, the, the, but having an environment in which you can ask questions confidentially uh, of, a, of a peer group that you respect, um, I think it's a really, really powerful way to learn. Uh, and that's, you know, I mean, that's exactly what the Supper Club's all about. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Um, and just final question, which I always like to, um, to end on is, is there anything that you'd like to shamelessly plug? <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. There's, al- there's always a few. So, uh, so any uh, well, uh, anyone who's running an exciting growth business, it, we, we we would love to hear uh, from them uh, um, if they're interested in in either supplement. We also run a uh, a network for growth businesses, sort of at the 250,000 sort of five star up, so just above micro. Uh, okay. On on LinkedIn, which is a discussion forum, and um, we're also looking if people are are looking to be mentored, um, then drop us a line if they go to the. Uh, Prelude Group uh, site, um, preludegroup.co.uk. There's a there's a thing there which is a an online brief application um, mm-hmm. saying if you, we take some details and then we try and match people up. So I guess that's my plug back. If somebody's looking for a mentor, um, they're running a growth business, then give us a shout. And we'll see if we can help. Fantastic. Well, um, what I'll do is I'll make sure that at the um, when we put the the podcast up, I will uh, put all the the requisite links in there. Um, Fantastic. Um, to make sure that um, people can, it's easy for people to get in touch with you. That sounds great. Um, Duncan, thank you for your time today and for sharing a, a few thoughts, and uh, that's really interesting. And, um, well, I'll, I'll let you know when everything goes live, and I look forward to, um, you know, getting a, a bit of response from uh, on, the, uh, on the podcast. Fantastic. Well, thanks very much indeed, Adrian. It's been All a right. pleasure. Thank you. Cheers.